So in this video, we're going to find the first three terms of the expansion of the square root of 3 plus 2x. And then we're going to use that expansion uh, with x is equal to 1 over 10 to find an approximation of root 5. And then we're going to use x equals 1 quarter to find an approximation to root 2. Okay, so first job, find the first three terms of the expansion of the square root of 3 plus 2x. So the square root of 3 plus 2x is 3 plus 2x to the half. Now, in order to use the binomial expansion, I need to get that into the form of 1 plus. So I'm going to factor the 3 out of the two terms. So 1 plus 2 thirds x all to the half. And then we've got 3 to the half, which is square root of 3, times by 1 plus 2 thirds x to the half. Now I can use the binomial expansion formula on this part, which is in the formula booklet, and then multiply it through by root 3. So this is equal to root 3 times by 1 plus n times by x plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times by 2 thirds x squared. Okay, close the bracket. Now, because um, I'm just writing down the first three terms, I'll put that this is approximately equal to. Okay, so I want to simplify this. So we've got root 3 times by 1 plus 1 third x. Then we're going to have uh, 1 half times minus a half, so minus a quarter, uh, divided by 2 factorial times by 2 thirds squared is minus 1 over 18. So minus 1 over 18 x squared. Now, I could then multiply that through by root 3, but for the purposes of... Uh, so I could expand the bracket out if I wanted to, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay? So I'm just going to leave that, and it'll just make everything like, look a little bit neater. Okie dokie. Right. So for part 1, then, Hence, use x equals one-tenth to find an approximation to root 5. So, let's just take a look at the left-hand side first. We're going to substitute in x equals one-tenth. So, we've got the square root of 3 plus 2 lots of one-tenth. Now, 2 times one-tenth is one-fifth. So, we've got 3 plus one-fifth. Now, 3 is 15 fifths plus 1 fifth, so we get 16 fifths. So this is the square root of 16 fifths. Square root the numerator and the denominator, we get 4 over root 5. OK, so that's where this root 5 is going to be coming from. Now, for the right-hand side, we've got root 3 times by substituting in one-tenth. So one-third times one-tenth, take away one over 18 times one over 10 squared. So one plus one over 30, take away one over 18 times one over 100. And we get root three times by, so one, eight, five, nine, root 3 over 1,800. So what I'm saying is that this is approximately equal to this. So 4 over root 5 is approximately equal to 1859 root 3 over 1,800. Now I need to get root 5 is approximately equal to. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So root 5 over 4 is approximately equal to 1800 over 1859 root 3. OK. Now, I now need to multiply both sides by 4. And to get this as neat as possible, I'm going to try and write it in exact form. Now. 
I recognise that if you type that into the Casio, uh, into my Casio ClassWiz, uh, it goes straight to decimals. Um, so I don't really want that. So I'm going to multiply by 4 and times top and bottom by root 3. Okay, so essentially I'm going to have 1800 times by 4 and then because I'm going to have 3 in the denominator because I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root 3, I'm going to divide that by 3 and I get 2400. So this is root 5 is approximately 2400 root 3 over 1859. OK, so let's see how close we actually are. 2,400 times by root 3 divided by 1,859. So therefore, root 5 is approximately 2.23610 dot, dot, dot. OK, now if we type root 5 into our calculator, press the SD button, we get 2.236, so, so good so far, then 0.67977. So they are pretty close, OK? And all I needed was the first three terms of the binomial expansion. Now, of course, for this example also, I needed to know what root 3 was. OK, because if I didn't know what root 3 was, then I wouldn't have been able to evaluate this. OK, so just as a heads up. But using root 3, I could get an approximation of root 5 there. Right, let's take a look at part 2 then. So we'll do this in a similar way. So for part 2, let's look at the left hand side first. So we're going to use x as a quarter this time. So we're going to have the square root of 3 plus 2 lots of a quarter. So that's 3 plus a half. So 3.5, which is 7 halves. So this is the square root of 7 halves, which is root 7 over root 2. OK, so that's where the root 2 is going to come from. Now the right-hand side is root 3 times by substituting in 1 quarter into this. So 1 plus 1 third times by 1 quarter. Take away 1 over 18 times 1 quarter squared. So 1 plus 1 twelfth. Take away 1 over 18 times by 1 over 16. And we get 311 root 3 over 288, because remember we've got the root 3 out the front there. Right, so we now know that root 7 over root 2 is approximately 311 root 3 over 288. So, in a similar way, I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So root 2 over root 7 will be approximately 288 over 311 root 3. I'm then going to multiply both sides by root 7. So root 2 is approximately 288 root 7 over 311 root 3. Now, I'll multiply top and bottom by root 3. Uh, 288 divided by 3 is 96. So that will be... So multiplying top and bottom by root 3, uh, I'm going to get a root 21, but I'm also dividing by 3 now. So 288 divided by 3 is 96. So that'll be 96 root 21 over 311. OK, so 96 times root 21 divided by 311. And I get, therefore, root 2 is approximately 1.4145571288. Right, 
Right, so let's try root 2 on the calculator, let's see how close it is. 1.4142135162. So it is very close. But of course, in order to calculate it, I needed to know what the square root of 21 was. Okay, so there's a little bit of kind of like, with some of these, um, chicken and the egg, really. Uh, <laughs> you know, what, what's the likelihood that I would know root 21 before I knew root 2? But essentially, the point is that it shows you how you can do it um, using other thirds and approximate uh, root 5 and root 2 using other thirds. Um, and how binomial expansion can be utilised.